Lesson 12.1b, Describing Events. An experiment is an activity involving chance in which results are observed. Each observation of an experiment is a trial, and each result is an outcome. A set of one or more outcomes is an event. We roll a number cube, and the outcome is 4. 4 is the event. So we'll go over the meaning of all of these and give examples throughout the video. The probability of an event, written with a capital P, parentheses, event, close parentheses, and inside here would be whatever the event is, so that's why we just wrote event here. It measures the likelihood that the event will occur. Probability is a measure between 0 and 1, and can be written as a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. So here, the event would be impossible. That's a zero. There's no way it's going to happen. In the middle, it's as likely as not likely. It's equally yes or no to how likely it will happen. It's a 50-50 chance. Over here, the one, it's most definitely certain it will happen. So this will give you some idea of the meaning of the words. An experiment, that's an activity of chance with observed results. It would be like flipping a coin five times to see how many heads or tails we get. That would be an experiment. A trial would be each repetition or observation of the experiment. So we could do three trials of this experiment. That means we would do three trials of flipping a coin five times, so we would flip the coin 15 times. Each group of five would be the trial. An outcome, that's a possible result of a probability experiment. So an outcome would be heads from flipping the coin one time. An event, that's an outcome or set of outcomes of an experiment or situation. For this experiment, the event would be heads, heads, tails, heads, tails. For the outcome, if when we flipped it five times, this is what we got. The probability, that's a number from 0 to 1, which is 0% to 100%, that describes how likely an event is to occur. How likely are we to get heads or tails? Well, a coin only has two sides, one side is head and one side is tails, so we have a 50% chance of getting heads, or we could say we have a 50% chance of getting tails. It's equally likely as unlikely that we'll get either one. So here we have this number line of zero is impossible. That's no way it's going to happen. And one or 100% is certain that it's definitely going to happen. We have equally yes or no as likely as not likely, which is the halfway mark, 50% or 5 tenths. And in between 0 and the halfway mark, we have it's unlikely, but it still could happen. And over here, we've got it's likely to happen, but it's not certain. So it's kind of in between halfway and, and 1. If the event is not likely to occur, the probability of the event is close to zero. So if it's not likely to occur, it will be somewhere around here. It will be closer to zero. If an event is likely to occur, the event's probability is closer to one. So here we have our number line. And event A says the probability of rolling a number cube, which has seven as the event, is zero. Well, a number cube, a regular number cube, has six sides, and there is no seven. So the event is zero. It's impossible because a number cube only has one through six. The chance of it being a seven is zero. It's impossible. For event B, the probability of rolling a number cube, which has an even number as the event, is as likely as not. It's 50% because there are three even numbers and three odd numbers. On a number cube, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. How many even numbers are there? 2, 4, 6, and there's three odd numbers. It's 50-50. We have a 50% chance of rolling an even number. So let's try a couple more. 
Event A says the probability of rolling a number cube which has a number less than 7. Well, all the numbers on a six-sided cube are less than 7, so rolling a number less than 7 is a 1. It's 100%. It's certain it's going to be less than 7. All of the numbers on the cube are less than 7. We have 1 through 6. For event B, the probability of 2 or greater is likely, since 5 of 6 sides of the cube are 2 or greater. We'd have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's very likely that we would roll a 2 or greater. It would be likely it would be close to this 1. It would be close to certain. Let's try a couple more. We have A, the probability of red as the event is 50%. It's as likely as not, since half the area is red. We have four areas, and two of them are red. Half the areas are red. So we have a 50% chance of spinning this spinner and it landing on a red. It's as likely as not. It's 50%. The probability of yellow as the event is one-fourth. We have one out of four areas. That would be 25% since one of four sections is yellow. Just this section. The probability of event A is more likely than event B. A was 50% and B was 25%. It's more likely we'll get red than yellow. For the probability of the event, the probability of red is half and the probability of yellow is one-fourth. Here we have a bag that contains 10 beads. There's one red, there's four blue, and there's five brown. We can write the probability of the event of picking the different colors. We have the probability of the event, and the numerator is going to be the number of that color in the bag, and the denominator is going to be the total number of beads in the bag. So the probability of picking a brown bead, there's five of them, and there's 10 in the bag, that would be 5 tenths, or 1 half when it's simplified. The probability of picking a blue bead, well, there's 4 of them, so that would be 4 tenths, which can be simplified to 2 fifths. The probability of picking a red bead, there's only 1 out of the 10, so that's 1 tenth, that's very close to 0. And the probability of picking a red, blue, or brown bead, well, those are all the colors in the bag, so that's a one. That's certain that we'll do that because those are the three colors in the bag. We have a 100% chance of choosing one of those colors. The probability of picking a yellow bead is zero. There are no yellow beads in the bag. We finished describing events. We're going to move on to finding probability. Make sure you do your best to learn these vocabulary words. It's going to be very helpful to you as we move forward. Have a great day, and please join me for the third part of the lesson. Bye.